This video is about something called powers or indices or exponents. And essentially, these are just a shorthand way of compressing multiplication or division expressions. Now, the cool thing is that they've got this whole bunch of associated laws that go along with them that help us to simplify and reduce expressions and make things a lot easier later on. So that's what this video is all about. First of all, if you're not sure what a power is, let's have a look at what that means first of all. When you raise a number to the power, that's the, the words we use, it's basically a shorthand way of saying that we're going to multiply a number by itself or a letter by itself sometimes. And you're doing it a given number of times. So something you're probably familiar with seeing is something like three to the power two or three squared or five squared or 10 squared or whatever number it is. But the power two is what I'm importantly interested in here. Essentially what it means is when that number there in the index or the exponent is positive, that we're going to have a multiplication expression. And in that multiplication expression, we'll have this number here, which is called the base, appearing the same number of times as we have in the index. So three to the power two means three is going to appear twice and with a multiplication in the middle of it. And similarly, if you thought about five to the six, that just means we're gonna have five appearing six times with multiplications in between it. Okay, so you can see one, two, three, four, five, six fives and they're multiplied, so we say five to the power six, or five raised to the sixth power, and so on. Now in general, we would write a to the n, where a is called the base, and n is called the exponent, or index, or power, and that just means a is going to appear n times with multipliers between them. Okay, now that's for positive n's. When you've got a negative, it kind of means one over that thing, and can also imply uh, division. Okay. Now, like I said, there are a whole bunch of rules that go with this that help us to simplify expressions and write things a little bit differently and reduce things down. And we can use these when we're doing our maths later on. Now, if this was a uh, more theoretical mathematics course, I'd show you how each one of these things is true. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to say that here are some rules which we can show that are true if we want. But for now, we're just going to take them as true. So let's have a look at them. From the top, any number raised to the zero power, always one. Okay, so that's how we can remember that one. It's a little bit different from the others, but it's just one you can keep in mind. Like I was mentioning, a negative index, a to the minus n. That just means one over a to the positive n. So it's just like flipping or reciprocal. Now some really useful ones, multiplication and division. If we have the same base, a, raised to some powers, and we want to multiply those together, we just leave the base and we add those two indices. You might be even able to figure that one out for yourself. Imagine writing out a to the m as a multiplication expression and then multiplying it by a to the n. You'd have m plus n a's in, with all these multiplication symbols between them. So you'd have a to the m plus n. Now a to the m divided by a to the n, sort of the same, but instead of adding, because we're dividing by it, we're gonna subtract n. So a to the m minus n. And make sure with that one you get them in the right order. If we have a power, a to the m, to another power, so we're raising a to the m to the nth power, we actually multiply those together. And you might even want to try to figure that one out for yourself if you write it out on a scrap of paper. Try it out with just some regular numbers, not a's and m's and n's. Now a power of a product, if we expand this one out, we end up with a to the n times b to the n. Okay. And finally, the power of a quotient, a over b to the n. Well, that works similarly, a to the n over b to the n. Uh, and you've got to remember that that one only works when b is not zero, of course. Although you probably wouldn't have written that in the first place if b was zero. Okay, let's try out some examples. Now, why don't you pause the video, have a crack at these yourself, try to maybe expand them out or just use the rules if you like, the rules from the previous slide. Give yourself a couple of minutes and work through those, then come back and see how I go through it. Okay, let's take a look at a first. 3 to the power 2 over 2 to the power 0. Remember, we said any number to the power 0 is always 1. So we can rewrite as something over 1. 3 squared, that's just 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 over 1, well that's just regular old arithmetic, and that's going to be 9. Okay, in B, we have P to the 2 times P to the 7. Now, the important thing here is that the things being multiplied have the same bases. That's that P there. 
it doesn't matter what these things up the top are. But our rule back here said that if we've got the same bases multiplied, then we leave the base and add the indices. So we're going to leave the base and add the indices 2 plus 7. You can do that in one step if you like, p to the 9. Okay, and the final one, C, we've got AB over CD, all raised to the third power. Let's have a look here. That is, okay, it's this kind of thing. We've got a fraction raised to a power. And what it says here is we're just going to leave those fraction elements there, but raise each one of them to the power. So in our case, we've got A to the, well, A times B. I'm going to leave that in brackets to the third power. And C times D to the third power. And then we have to keep going because we needed our answers in terms of a uh, single index, single positive index for each number. So we're going to expand out and get A cubed again from the table of rules. B cubed over C cubed, D cubed. And there we go. We've used a bunch of our index laws to rewrite or simplify some expressions there. Now this is probably a good time to point something out. Sometimes I just pop these little uh, little factoids in just that stand out to me at some point in time. This is a really important one that people often mix up. AX squared is not the same as AX all squared. And now you can see why that is, because AX squared, according to our index laws, we need to put that square onto each of those elements inside and get A squared X squared. And that, of course, is not the same as AX squared. A lot of times you'll see people make that mistake thinking that those two things are the same. Well, now you can see that they're not, and that's a way to show it. All right, a couple more, I guess, more involved examples. Let's have a go at these. Again, if you like, pause the video, try these out for yourself, test yourself out, and then come back and see how I go about it. Okay, so in A, we've got xy squared, and then xy in brackets to the fourth power. Now again, you need to remember you've got your order of operations to follow here. So we need to look at the thing inside the brackets. Can't really do anything with it, but then we can do that uh, power 4 there, so we can expand that through. So we've got x, y squared, x to the 4, and y to the 4, by expanding this one out using our index laws. And then we need to simplify. We're going to bring together the x's, because we've got x to the, well, that's x to the power 1. Okay, there's one x there, so we can think of that as x to the power 1. So we're going to have x to the 1 plus 4, and we've got a y squared and a y to the 4, so it's y to the 2 plus 4. And then clean that up, x to the 5 and y to the 6. And that's that one. All right, next up in part b, we've got minus a, all raised to the fifth power. The important thing here to remember is that you're raising to the fifth power not just a, but that minus as well. It's kind of like we're saying minus 1 times a to the fifth power. That's how I'm going to go about it anyway. So then I just bring my power through minus 1 to the 5 and a to the 5. And minus 1 to the fifth is just minus 1. So we're left with minus a to the fifth. Okay, in C, we have, again, we've got a quotient, 3b squared, all squared, and then over 2b cubed. I'm going to work on the top first. I can't do anything inside the brackets, but I can then expand through using my power laws and my index laws. That's going to be 3 squared and b squared squared. Remember that when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the numbers. So it's b to the 2 times 2, not 2 plus 2. All divided by 2b to the 3. And now we can see we've got, well, we've got 9 up there. b to the 4 over 2b cubed. Uh, we could divide 9 and 2 and get 4.5, but I might just leave it because I'm writing fractions at the moment. And b to the 4 divided by b to the 3, that's one we haven't done yet. If we jump back to our index laws, the same base divided means we subtract the indices. So we're going to have b to the 4 minus 3. So we'll have 9 on 2, b to the 4 minus 3 is b to the 1, which is just b. So we can leave that one like that. Okay, and the final example, we have L cubed M squared over N to the minus 4 squared. All right, I am going to bring that power 2 inside. So I'm going to have L to the 3 times 2, M to the 2 times 2. Remember, I'm just multiplying that 
into each of these indices, n to the minus 4 times 2 as well. Okay, and then we'll clean it up, l to the 6, m to the 4, and that's going to be n to the minus 8, but normally when we leave an expression, we wouldn't leave a negative power uh, on the base of a, of a fraction, because it's kind of redundant, it really just means that it should be back up the top as a positive power. So I'm going to put that as n to the positive 8. It would have been minus 8 on the bottom, but if I bring it up to the top, it becomes a positive 8. Okay? And that's our examples done. So, in this video we've looked at powers or indices or exponents, all mean the same thing really. Uh, just thinking of it as a shorthand way to reduce expressions for multiplication and division. And then we saw that there were some great rules that we can use to simplify those expressions. That's the index laws. You can pop back a few slides and remember those if you like. And had a look at how to reduce some of our expressions down. So that's it for our index laws and power laws uh, video. There is another video which looks at fractional indices. Um, lots of the same rules apply as well, but we'll see how to link fractional indices and things that you might be familiar with called square roots or cube roots and other roots as well.